So I'm Matt Burns, I'm head of school here at Worcester, and I want to uh, welcome you uh, and thank you for coming here tonight uh, when we will be honoring two of Worcester's finest. Uh, and in, in thinking about today's honorees, uh, and, and those that have received uh, similar awards in the past, uh, in trying to think of like, one word that really describes uh, how we feel about these people, I kept coming back to the word admiration. Uh, I think that every year uh, we give uh, the Young Alumni and Alumni Award to people who we really admire. Uh, and, you know, we, we admire them because they, they always have uh, sort of risen to the top or, or really mastered their particular chosen profession, but they've also done it in a way uh, that sort of embodies the ethos of Worcester School. And whether it's through their profession or in addition to their profession, uh, their focus, they really embody uh, self-help. Uh, so they're always thinking about um, how can I give back to my community? How can I use what I know and, and um, what I've learned, what I've gained? How do I turn that back over to people, uh, particularly the people that are coming uh, behind me, perhaps, uh, to sort of create a better world, right? Which is what we still do here today, right? Like that's our aspiration for all of our students. And um, when we see that enacted um, in, in people who've, who've left here and who've gone on and are um, leading you know, very different lives, uh, we, we can't help but really admire what they're, what they're doing and what they've done. And, uh, and as a school, uh, we, we thank them because obviously they're the, they're the role models then uh, that um, we like to sort of uh, bring back and talk to our students about because you know, we, want, we want them to do that too. Um, so, uh, and, and today's two honorees, uh, you know, really couldn't have sort of taken different pathways, I think, after Worcester. Um, but in, in many ways uh, are, are doing very similar work in terms of uh, their thinking and how they, um, how they do things to give back to their communities and to give back to people. So um, we're thrilled to have, um, have them both here. I'm here to present the John B. Cheeseman 1957 Young Alumni Award and to Jacqueline Mason-Pierre, who is a grad of the 2005 class. Um, this award is presented annually to graduates of the last 20 years who has demonstrated exceptional achievement for their chosen field. And they've committed to the four cardinal principles of religion, intellectual excellence, simplicity, and hard work and success to bring good to the world. I'm honored to be here as I thank the world of Jacqueline and her family, my dear friends, Barb, Rob, Martin, and Jacqueline. I've also missed this campus in my Worcester family. When I cross over that bridge every day for 16 years and I crossed over it today, I was just like, oh my gosh, it's almost like, you know, my car was driving itself, which is still the same car after two tuitions. <laughs> yep, 2002, Honda Pilot. Um, I used to tell people though, I love teaching here. It's much more than a profession. And I drove onto campus with a smile on my face each and every day. And just magic definitely surrounds the Worcester community, for sure. Um, I met Jacqueline when the Worcester Lower School opened its doors back in 1991. Jacqueline's mom and I were two of the original seven that started this phase of the Lower School. As soon as I laid eyes on you, we were fast friends. You would tell me story after story, all about your adventures, and you would definitely ask me a lot of questions, question after question about anything and everything. Um, we would always be like eye to eye. But all of the teachers, Worcester brats, grew up together. We shared our children just like we shared our students. Um, I had Jacqueline in kindergarten and then again in second grade. Um, and what a second grade year we had. I'd like to think that I saw significant signs of you then as the woman you are today. Um, I believe you had experiences that nurtured your chosen path in the farming and nutritional professions that you're in. You know when you're asked um, to find three adjectives to describe you or another person, and you're always like, ooh, which ones should I choose? Well, there is no simple way to select three for Jacqueline. Um, simply, yes, sweetest child ever, um, but who grew up and shared her happy, you were always sweet with me, um, who grew up and shared her happy, inquisitive, kind, generous, sensitive, and gorgeous self with the world. 
Jacqueline was a child who had a huge heart for animals and people. And in second grade, when she researched and wrote about the manatees and their natural habitat, she became so interested in the dangers that manatees faced that she started the class on the Let's Save the Manatees bandwagon. <laughs> Boy, did that go for a long time. And I actually had to like start sneaking the manatee books out of her book bin because she just kept rereading them again and again. And I was like, oh, geez, she has to change up her genre here. you know. Um, but she was an organizer of fundraisers back then at the age of seven. Um, you and your classmates had a bake sale to raise money to adopt a manatee. And she was so passionate about saving the manatees that the entire family drove to Florida that March and spent time with the beautiful beasts. Um, you're a sales girl, that's for sure. Um, I recall the bake sales, though, that we continued and more animals were adopted as we moved through the year. I know we adopted a wolf that year. Um, Jane Goodall, she actually came to visit us. Greenpeace and Heifer Fund definitely come to mind. Um, Jacqueline, just you melt my heart when it comes to this. That year, Jacqueline and her friends spent time also at New Pond Farm, which is just over the hill in Reading. Um, we did the maple syruping with Ann Taylor and her son Thatcher, who was a classmate. Um, this led us to owling because, boy, we all spent the night at New Pond Farm and went owling under the stars together. It was such a special experience. Um, I'll always remember when we spotted an owl in a tree and Jacqueline was frozen to her spot, not wanting to bother it, like, shh, you know, go like quiet, quiet. Pretty sure Owl Moon was on our plate that year too by um, Jane Cannon, but um, the owl actually swooped us and most of your classmates like scrambled to me, but you actually stayed in your spot and started like try to track the flight of the owl. You're like, oh, where's Jacqueline? Go get her, save her. Um, but, uh, we were sure active and adventurous that year. We traveled to Southport Beach um, to stay in the brackish waters, then walked the beach, which was littered with horseshoe crabs. This happened to be mating season. So when other children were saying, ew, what are the crabs doing? Get them off each other. Well, Jacqueline was running over there going, they're making babies, you guys. Don't touch them. We need more horseshoe crabs in the world. So I just remember, I was like, and I do remember that so well because we came back and we did a shared writing experience about it. But lastly, Jacqueline and her classmates decided we needed to design an outdoor classroom since we went hiking all the time. So all of you students right now, you could do this on Monday. <laughs> Is that um, we spent so much time outside in the back woods. So Jacqueline was like, why not spend the day learning in the woods? So we set out and we created our classroom along the stream bed. Jacqueline and her friends measured the exact footage for the outdoor classroom that matched our indoor classroom, making sure there were stumps and rocks we're sitting on and writing on. And we left our bin of field journals Pencil, it was such a special bin. Bin of field journals, pencils, and rulers out there, and we covered them, you know, behind the rocks, and we covered them up with the branches, just in case someone might want to take them from us, and we were just very special. Uh, but those held our experiences in sketch and poetry. Um, and by the way, Jacqueline is a beautiful poet. You should ask her one day. Um, so one day, actually, when we were out there, out and about, and the kids actually, back then, I didn't have to have, you know, like a tight rope on all of them. And they were just up and down the stream bed on their own with their partner, um, mucking about. And Alexandra Schoolman and Jacqueline were partners. And they were down, way down at the other end of the stream. And they, they were just yelling to us one day and like, come up, come see us, come see us. And we found something. And what they found when we got down there I thought it was going to be another antler that we found. they found, but it was actually a real fossil. And this real <coughs> fossil turned into a huge class inquiry, and we went, we had the Peabody Museum coming here, everything, and we learned that it actually was not native to this area, but it took three months to figure that out. It was a great inquiry, <laughs> that's for sure. It was from the landfill, but we didn't know that. <laughs> but it was a great inquiry. Oh, so Jacqueline immerses herself in all that she does. Throughout her high school career here, she was her kind, thoughtful, adventurous, and intelligent self. She was a scholar, a strong sports player, a caring friend and teammate, and in her sophomore year, she actually traveled to Spain and spent a lot of time there, and she became bilingual. 
Um, her senior year brought her back to New Pond Farm for her SIS, I believe it's called, her internship, and that was to learn all about the farming. Um, wherever Jacqueline goes, whatever circles she moves in and out of, she builds community and lasting relationships. And I'm thinking that's true with people and animals. So, not a surprise, just looking at your gorgeous smile and spend time with your keen mind, you light up every room that you enter. Um, Jacqueline pursued her Bachelor's of Science in Environmental Science at the University of Vermont. In her junior year, she was able to take a semester off due to all the AP classes that she actually took at Worcester. How many was that? It was a lot. It was a lot because you, you graduated on time. Um, so she was able to take this semester off and she actually went to South America and she did this thing called woof. She woofed in South America. So by herself, all alone, traveling the hillside towns and through the mountains, moving from one farm to the next, to all the mothers that are out there, there was no, little to no phone service for many weeks at a time. And I'm pretty sure you gave us all our gray hairs very early. Because <laughs> I just kept calling your mother, where is she now? I don't know. So, but I will say that all I know about WOOF, it's an acronym. And there's a website, WOOF International, and you can fill us in later about that. Um, Jacqueline graduated from UVM in 2009 with her BS from the Honors College in Rubenstein School of Environmental and Natural Resources. She's also received in, she also received a concentration in conservation biology and had her thesis published in the American Fur Journal. And those are wonderful accomplishments. After graduation, Jacqueline's adventurous, adventurous soul took her to South Africa where she traveled extensively. She worked on her family's big game farm in Namibia, and then found herself at the Cheetah Conservation Fund, also in Namibia. Um, you have many roles at the cheetah.org, but two that stand out to me are the outreach education classes for the Namibian children and the coordination of international training courses for wildlife conservation professionals. Once she finally decided to cross the Atlantic again, she worked on a variety of farms, one being right here in Bethel, and that's Holbrook Farm, and she brought new life to Holbrook's. Um, your veggies and flowers were just gorgeous there, and it became year-round farm that was open, which was amazing. Another farm that stands out to me um, from the stories that I heard was when you found your way to Crystal Spring Community Farm, a diversified organic farm in Brunswick, Maine. And somewhere in her work, I do remember talking to her mom about sheep farming. So we'd have to know where that was, but she definitely worked on a sheep farm. Um, once again, Jacqueline found her way back to Connecticut where she has been settled for a while. Jacqueline is now the executive director of the New Haven Farms, but was the farmer for the first five years. New Haven Farms was founded in 2012 to respond to the intersecting crisis of diabetes obesity, environmental depredation, and poverty by promoting health and community development through urban agriculture. In partnership with local healthcare providers, New Haven Farms programs and farms work together um, towards wellness by harnessing the energy of the community and the potential of vacant urban land. Through teaching cooking and nutrition skills, training community health leaders, and creating access to resources, New Haven Farms grows food as medicine in the city. Jacqueline executes the diversity of her role now as the executive director, from recruiting, training, mentoring, and managing all staff, interns, and volunteers, all the way to collaborating with city officials, nonprofits, funders, board members, health clinics, and community, and to the spearheading to new projects initiatives, including Yale New Haven Hospital and Community Food System Hub in New Haven. And I say, as if your role as executive director is not brimming enough, she is deeply involved in pursuing a master's in nutrition. So Jacqueline, it is with great honor and respect that I bestow the John B. Cheeseman 1957 Young Alumni Award to you. You exemplify the four cardinal principles of religion, intellectual excellence, <coughs> simplicity, and hard work and success to bring good to the world. Congratulations. And so in addition to uh, 
being a wildly successful business leader, Bob uh, has um, led uh, a number of campaigns, uh, including one at the University of Massachusetts, uh, Amherst, where uh, they raised over $300 million, um, and that's his college alma mater. Uh, he also launched a scholarship program there called the Reason to Give Scholarship uh, for students whose parents uh, had lost their jobs during the Great Recession. Um, and uh, he's also served on the, the board of the Kennedy Library Foundation, uh, and I'm guessing uh, a number of other things that, uh, that I don't know about. Um, so I, I wanted to, uh, to say that Bob's always been a strong supporter of Worcester School, and uh, unfortunately over the years, um, I think we maybe hadn't been a great relationship partner with him, so we sort of lost touch. And um, we were able to reconnect with Bob up in Boston, uh, and at that time we were talking about restarting our hockey program. And uh, as it turns out, Bob played hockey when he was here, among a number of other sports. And um, he's been supportive of that program, and he was, his support was instrumental in us being able to get other support. Um, so as we stand here today, and this is just really just one example of the sort of um, things that the folks that we honor do, where they, they sort of plant seeds, no pun intended, and then um, things really flourish, uh, and they, they sort of do that across the board in the things that they do. So um, these three gentlemen who are going to read uh, his, um, his um, resolution uh, we're, we're among the first hockey players here when we really only had three or four to start with. And uh, that was four years ago, and now we have over 30 kids in the program. Uh, so we've really been able to sort of restart something that was a, um, a great tradition for us, uh, which is another way for kids to really sort of get involved in something and be passionate about something. Um, so that's kind of the connection about how we ended up here and how we're gonna have uh, these three um, Worcester students, James, James, and Drew. Uh, who are hockey players and fine young men uh, who are going to come up and uh, they're going to present Bob with his uh, alumni award. Hi everybody. Hi. Um, all right. The resolution of Worcester School, whereas Robert Louis Epstein was born in 1945 and raised in Brockton, Massachusetts, representing the third of four generations there. In the summers, Bob would travel east to spend time on Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, Cape Cod, and Cape Cod. Closer to home, it was Nantasket Beach. Between these destinations and holidays in Florida with his grandfather, Bob, Bob found his love of boating and fishing. With his boat, Bootlegger, Bob would go on to become an accomplished fisherman and notable tournament competitor. While on land, golf became a passion from his days caddying at the Thorny Leg Golf Club in Brockton. Whereas Bob, better known as Epi, arrived at Worcester School in the fall of 1958 under the leadership of headmaster Mr. Burdery, the best. Classmates would hail from Florida, Philadelphia, Long Island, and closer to Marybrook, Sherman, Darien, Greenwich, and Willen. However, Bob could be heard sharing the wonders of Brockton, Boston, and New England. His home away from home became the farmhouse. Roommates would complain about Knox's drawer and closet inspections, wonder if Mike Delsig's saxophone playing had a future, and throw snowballs at cars while later watching The Late Show in the infirmary. <laughs> Bob's time spent there earned him the farmhouse prefect, um, a job that he filled with industry and leadership, not to be confused with the back row boys in chem lab with Mr. Corshen. This group of young lads, Epstein, Feiner, Stevens, and Starr, would see who could say the worst things in the best way. Mr. Corshen spoke French, having an advantage. Whereas, originating from the City of Champions, it was natural that Bob's most significant contributions to Worcester School could be seen on the athletic fields. He was a consistent, solid member of the football, baseball, and hockey teams. His first love was hockey, flooding water field, and he brought superb skills as a goalie for four years, which won his senior year co-captain and two most valuable player trophies. During the 1963 season, under the direction of Coach Andy Sullivan, Bob stopped 250 shots, allowing only 11 goals for a 94% save percentage and 1.3 goals per game average. Whereas the next destination would be the University of Massachusetts Amherst and a Bachelor of Arts in 1967. A member of the Tau Epsilon Phi fraternity, Bob still maintains a lifelong, lifelong friendships. Upon graduation, he returned to Brockton and joined the family business 
a small regional beverage wholesaler. Along with his cousin and partner, James Rubenstein, Bob transformed Horizon Beverage Group to the largest alcohol distributor in New England, uh, employing over 800 people in five states. He has had the pleasure to work alongside his two sons, Douglas and Michael, and nephews. Under his expert tutelage, they have assumed leadership roles within the company. Whereas the Worcester School prayer extols, O oh God, you have given us every good gift. We thank you for the bounty of your creation, your teachings through the ages, the love of family and friends, and the goodly heritage of this school. Bless us, we pray, in our work and in our play. Make us gentle, gentle, generous, truthful, kind, and brave. Bob has done just that and more. He's an active, active, charitable member with a number of business and civic endeavors, particularly Brigham and Women's Hospital, Hospice of Cape Cod, and UMass Amherst. Bob has assumed several leadership positions, helping to transform the lives of many. 44th Annual Worcester Alumni Award be given by a grateful alma mater to Robert Louis Epstein of the great class in 1963. <laughs> Quite a history, and I'm sure there's more to come. Uh, I have an apology first to say that this speech and this being here is 56 years late. I haven't been back here since I graduated. And it haunts me because in my life, getting going after college, <coughs> Worcester was very much a part of my life. I was talking earlier today. There isn't a business experience I have, or a charity operation, uh, working as a trustee at UMass, whatever, where my experience with Worcester didn't come in handy. So what the hell, I own something for this. <coughs> and it's unbelievable. And the, what lives in me every day is the cast, is very put together. I don't think he realized then what he had, but boy, they played a very instrumental part of my life, my development, my successes, and I'm sure too many of you alumni that are out there. And the words, there's one, I mean, Corb and I were close, uh, but Coach Warner was like a godfather to me. He recognized ordinary students, and believe me, I was an ordinary student. Uh, and <coughs> He just had a way with very simple messages, words of life that didn't seem that important then, but boy, as time went on, they became more important and more helpful in handling the raising of a family and raising a business and just giving back. And I can remember, I still have dreams about it in the pond down there that I gotta see what's still there or not. But down there at two o'clock in the morning, they're flooding the rink and he's there smoking every two minutes. <laughs> hey, what the hell you doing? The rink's over there. It's cold from flooding over there. The other guy's not gonna realize how thin it is and gonna fall in there, which is exactly what he wanted to do. So we had quite, quite a routine and it's great memories. Uh, and I congratulate Matt for the way you're doing things here today. I had a very detailed tour of the place. Sorry, at the farmhouse left. If I known for sale, I might have bought it. <laughs> uh, but uh, great memories, great people, and a great institution based on sound, lifelong principles that I hope you young alumni, alumni students live up to. And you'll stand here the same way I am today, because hockey really tightens you up, man. <laughs> but I must say that in those days, there was no mask. There was nothing. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I, I became a hockey referee and uh, mm. for high school, college, and prep school, and my, my playing days were over. And I realized then what a jerk I was when I played here. <laughs> so things progressed in the final. Thank you to the school, one of my thank you to this prestigious award. And uh, it's nice to see it all, and that could be a eulogy, I guess, at some point. <laughs> Thanks again. Well, thank you all uh, again for being here. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Great job. And I'm going to uh, ask our award winners to sort of hang out so we can take some pictures up here with your families. And otherwise, uh, 
the, the bar is open. So uh, have a great time, and uh, it's great to see everyone. Thanks again.